Peace, 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 family. This is the updated video on making agar. You're gonna wanna have agar. I have agar in a jar here. And I'm using yeast extract, peptone. And then I'm also using organic malt extract. And then I have some food coloring spoons and we're gonna get started i've already loaded my flasks with the water i just use triple filtered tap water that's what i've been using i can't keep enough uh distilled water on deck as many people will say to use distilled water i don't so this is how i scale it and I'm gonna make water agar and nutritional agar. First, I will make the water agar. Now, I already have a bunch of water agar uh, trays, so I'm just gonna do one jar of water agar. So I'm just gonna get the water in. Magnetic stir, keep that, because you want it to stir as it cools. If it does not stir while it cools, it will solidify. And I wait to pour it until it's 113 degrees. We're gonna tear our scale out, get it to zero. And for a thousand milliliters, I use 18 grams of agar. That's my recipe. So I'm gonna weigh out 18 grams. Now you can get creative with your agar making, um, especially when you have new genetics that you wanna grow out and you're probably gonna grow it out in materials different than where they came from or what they're accustomed to. It's good to make, um, so for example, if you are getting agar from somebody that was using like, a different grain as the spawn, then it would be wise to take the grain you're going to use. And what you can actually do is put some of that grain in here and like cook it. Or you can collect the water from when you like soak the grain. Um, but I prefer to actually put some of the grain in water and just cook it for a bit for like an hour or something, like just simmer it, like tea, like make an infusion and extract basically, and uh, get the grain out, strain it out, and then get into this process, because I like my agar really clear. Um, so you can do that. And then perhaps if you're gonna be using, um, What's the other option in our substrate, right? So say in your substrate, you're gonna use manure, whereas your genetics were accustomed to growing in CVG, then you might wanna take some of that same process, the, the, whatever your substrate is. So like, you know how you would pasteurize it in a bag, the bag tech for pasteurization? You could do that in a small muslin bag or a small cheesecloth or whatever and cook it for a bit in here and then strain it out and use that water to make your agar. So I should have actually got the water hot before we started to just speed this up, but I didn't. So hmm. I'm gonna get this warm, warmer. It's not much in there, it's just the agar and water. Well, it's not much dissolving that needs to happen. But I'm gonna whip it nonetheless. We're gonna use this funnel. Lips. 
when you're using a funnel and it gets full and it's not moving, you have to lift it to keep the flow, to reduce the pressure so it can move freely. So I don't put food coloring in my water agar because that's how I know it's water agar. Otherwise, everything would be colorful and perhaps confusing. So there's a little bit of agar left in the bottom. It's all good because this recipe makes a very firm agar. But I'm going to immediately get more water in here so it doesn't start burning. So now I got to weigh out 36 grams of agar. But as we saw before, I can only fit about 18 grams on this piece of foil. I mean, I could get a container and do it. This is not good. This is not good. Um, stay on side two. Sometimes the scale needs a little bit of motion to make a new registration of the weight. So we're going to get the other 18. This is going to be a challenge in this size pot. I filled it to capacity, but this is why I used the funnel to make pouring easier. Once the water starts bubbling, turn it down. You don't want to cook it, so just turn it down. And now we're going to add our malt. Now for the malt, the LME, I would use 14 grams for 1,000 milliliters, but we're doing 2,000 milliliters, so I'm going to use 28 grams. And this is also why we're cooking it, because this LME acting up clearly it's doing stuff. I said we have to use 28 grams. It's not just 14, 28. Oh, look at that. Several ounce. Oh, 30. Let's take one of these off. Let's see what happens. Let's take another one off. Go back to 28. Now, ooh, this up. Oh, man, this stuff is tough. Tough like black stone. Man. Also, where I put on gloves, you know, it's gonna get hands-on in this process. And now for the yeast and peptone, I'm gonna use two grams of yeast and one gram of peptone. Two grams of yeast. You don't need a lot of peptone, just want it in there. Peptone is a bacteriological contra-nutrient benefit, especially at low dilution rates. 
and is recommended to support good growth of wide variety of more microorganisms. For identification of bacteria by performing various biochemical tests, it can also be used for commercial production of enzymes, vaccines, antibiotics, steroids, and other products. I just need a little bit to get it going. These things grow. So we're gonna start incorporating everything. I'm gonna turn the heat up a little bit. Now that I'm actively stirring it, I can prevent the sticking at the bottom by actively stirring. I'm gonna let it heat up a bit. It needs the heat to break down, so that's like, let's give it a second to do its own thing. Um, now the food coloring I found that 20 drops works but when you get like a cheap food coloring maybe I don't know so we're just gonna try to count well we're gonna count dark i don't know this food coloring was kind of crappy last time i feel like i didn't get like a rich color and i like to get a nice rich color see the color that's the whole point just to get a nice rich dark color so you can see the contrast of the mycelium and it starts showing its true beauty let me get set up to pour let's get the extra flask I like to rip the foil like this because you just dust it off. Dust it off and it's the perfect size to cover the caps. If you're into covering the caps, we're done scaling things, so I'm gonna get the scale out of the way. Get my pressure cooker into the mix. Make sure your pressure cooker is aligned on the stove properly. Very intimate work zone over here. I'm gonna get, start warming up the pressure cooker to speed up the entire process. Got it, got it, over here. I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill each beaker, each uh, flask about halfway full and I'm gonna hit them like twice. First pour, be wild. Beaker in their flasks. I'm not sure. <laughs> Next blast. <laughs> Whoa! A little too much there. It's all good. Let's turn it so I can see. Slow down when you get to the top, cause this thing's fall up pretty easy. All 
Okay. Oh, I didn't overpour not one of them actually. It just felt like it in the moment. All right. They're all filled. Uh, get this in the sink ASAP and get more water in this. So I'm gonna keep this here, keep it warm. So it washes out easier. Get our beakers on, our lids, get our lids on. Um, you just wanna tighten it enough, like it's tight, and then do like a, I don't know, just don't over tighten it actually, just close it. Close it, it's closed, you meet resistance, you're done. Close it, resistance, we're done. Some people say you don't have to use the foil, but I like using it. I'm gonna add more food color because like I said, this color, these colors are very pale. They're not very rich. You can see them that. Add another squirt. And then also the mycelium digests the coloring too, so when you get color plates that the color is like gone, I don't like that. I want it to be colorful. <laughs> I want vibrancy. All right, we're gonna add some more color on this one. Just cause I'm seeing the wave with these little things that they're pretty much like a single use size. All right, and that'll continue to mix itself in the pressure cooker. Cause a lot of people like, you know, you don't have to cook it like this. You could have also just put all the ingredients in the flask in your vessel and ran it, but I don't do that. I, I used to do that, and that's fine, but um, an effort of getting like really crystal clear agar, and I feel like it helps the mycelium digest it better too, or like faster. I just found I've gotten much better results by doing my agar this way, by cooking it first. So we're gonna take a look in the pressure cooker now. So we're loading up the pressure cooker. Now I have a like a, a formal canning rack tray under here. Those wire ones that hold the mason jars. I have one of those at the bottom a round one obviously, and then I have the plate that comes with the pressure cooker. And I've been using this setup since day one. And I think the pressure cooker says a minimum of 13 cups of water, but I've just come to know that if I stick my finger in on top of this plate where the water should rest on my finger and that's how I gauge it. But you know, figure out how you're gonna do it. Make sure you have your rocker before you get started. Um, if you haven't used your pressure cooker in a minute, wipe, take the ring out and wipe it down. And then I'm gonna get some cooking oil. I'm just gonna use some sunflower oil because that's the first thing that I grabbed out of the cupboard. And I'm just gonna go around the ring to lubricate it. You don't want your ring to dry out. So I just have oil on my hands and I'm going around the ring to clean it out. And then I'm gonna inspect my pressure cooker lid that this is moving freely, that this can move. And I'm going to look through this hole and make sure I can see through it and actually blow through it too. All right, so that's the pressure cooker has been inspected. And um, we're gonna just wipe out the lid a little bit with the inside of a shirt because that's the closest thing I have. And I don't know, I kind of have my pressure cooker sitting around in not the best storage situation for a couple days. Like, I laid tubs and I feel like some debris got in them in this. So we're just gonna get the lid back in. We've got our arrow on the right side. I do the same setup every time. Get the right arrow on, 
lock the lid. And then I'm going to double check that the base of the pressure cooker is perfectly on the eye of the burner because you want that like that. <laughs> you know, you want it evenly set. So we're going to get the prep. We're going to uh, release the air. We're going to gas it first. So gassing it is just allowing the pressure cooker to get hot enough that this comes up. This top pops up and this black one back here will pop up. There'll be a bunch of steam and it'll be loud, you know, it'll be like steaming, acting up. And then we're gonna let it do that for about 10 minutes. And then after 10 minutes, we'll place our rocker on here and then it should quickly move up to 15 PSI. And uh, once it's at 15 PSI, you're going to reduce the heat to about medium high, where it can maintain that pressure of 15 PSI. And we're gonna do that for 25 to 30 minutes. And, um, you know, check your altitude and stuff. Um, I know it's at 15 PSI when this thing is rattling, but if you're at like a higher altitude, I don't know, maybe for every thousand feet, you gotta put a penny on here or for every extra 10,000 feet or something, just look it up, figure it out. Um, I know that where I am, I can just put this thing on. But I know when I was somewhere else that was a very high altitude, they had like a penny or two on here, so. You know, make sure you're sterilizing correctly, using your pressure cooker correctly. I suggest you watch uh, videos on just how to use a pressure cooker in general. Like moms that are at home canning and preserving food and stuff like that, they have a lot of good info. So yeah, that's how I prepare agar.